Lady Lex UK and this week we are doing five years of dreams first person shooters and for the tutorial this week I'm going to be looking at this FPS creation kit and especially inter attack outs first person shooter models uh, now before I start I did say to one of my uh, viewers that I was doing first person shooters this week and they had a question about how to create a revive mechanic so that a player can revive another player in a first person shooter and I said I'll have a look at it and, and see if there's something I could do and it wasn't until I said that and posted that up that I realized actually no you you can't create um, a person to person revive uh, in a first person shooter game because you can't create that sort of game in dreams at all uh, all first person shooters in dreams are generally solo missions it is possible to create, I suppose, NPC characters that act with you, uh, but that's really quite difficult to get the AI to work successfully for that. Um, but on the whole, it's solo missions, and because there's no multiplayer online, you can't play with other players in a first-person mode because there's no split screen and there's only local multiplayer. So um, it's not going to be possible for me to make what they asked for. I did work on trying to work out how to do a self revive but there's a little bit complex in in that and uh, i haven't quite managed to get i did half of it but i've got limited time for doing tutorials and unfortunately today i did this entire tutorial uh for this and and then realized i hadn't pressed the record button ah so i'm gonna have to do it all again uh so uh we're gonna do a a simple look at this kit and uh, see how easy it is to make your own first person um first person shooter in dreams using the kits provided with very limited logic required so let's first of all we'll have a look at this this is the city streets kit this is the empty city kit by lucid stew and i'm going to use this as my base for my uh, first person shooter so we'll remix it you'll see it's a rather large cityscape Lots of lovely streets, buildings, foliage. It's very nice. Um, it's designed so that um, the player cannot fall off. There's walls all the way around. Except for here for some reason. So what, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this and move it. I think this has possibly been moved. Or maybe this was an ideal for something else. I don't know. But anyway, I'll put that there so that the player cannot fall off. And um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a zone, a beginning zone uh, for our game. So I'll just go over here and zoom down. And I'm going to create a big red wall. Like so. And we're going to place that across the street. Enlarge it until it fills the space. You want it so it goes inside the buildings so the player can, and slightly under the floor so the player definitely can get over it. Make sure it's high enough so the player can't get over it. Uh, then we'll go into uh, show and hide and turn preview invisibility. That tick is off. Go into our sculpture and then turn visibility off. So you can still see it. But if I go back into here and turn that on, you can see it is invisible. And I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to place that uh, over here in the street. There. And then I'm going to place that here. And block off here too so my player has a small arena and this will get opened up as we um as we kill as many people in the the waves that we want i'm going to open this up to another zone um so we can create another zone as well let's go 
Um, I think we'll do one there. And maybe at the end of this street. Well, that's a really open street, isn't it? That's it, enough to be. There. Um, that's made that really large, hasn't it? Um, I'll block this off. Um, again, we've got like that. And then another one. Over here, between these two buildings. Oh, I think we're going to have to block off this as well. Okay. There's our nearly second zone. Okay, so we've now got a quite a large second zone here. So there's our first zone, and here's our second zone, and that the rest of it can be our third zone. Right, okay, sorted. Right. Let's, uh, let's have a play and see what we got. Okay, so the kit... It's in this FPS creation kit. These are just some FPS games, ignore that. Um, here is ITT's Advanced FPS Template. You can search for that in the, in the assets as well. And here is our character model. And we can place him down like so. There he is. Um, now, he is not a full body model. Uh, if I put this preview invisibility back down, you'll see he's just hands. Uh, so if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to redesign this, change the gun, etc., you can do. Um, and all you need to worry about really is the, the the hands and the arms. You can make them more realistic, paint them up, give them some clothing, etc. So that's you just adapt this, and you can take out this gun. There is instructions on how to replace the gun with a different gun. Um, otherwise. Uh, that's what it looks like, but let's put that back on like that so we can see it all. There's projectiles here, explosions, all sorts of things for grenades and things like that. So there's 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 lots of uh, uh, bits and bobs. These have to be uh, with the, the character model, otherwise things do not work. Um, so let's have a look and see how that looks. So we've got our model here. As you can see, he's carrying a gun. Let's just go wandering up to one of these walls, these invisible walls. See what happens yeah we can't go any further this is a really good way of designing uh, a set that looks like it goes on forever so you use false perspective and put like smaller things in the background um so it looks like it goes on and on and on and on but really it's false perspective but because the player can't get any further forward um they never see that um this this is being used here as a an arena area block but it's also very good for uh, keeping players off the edges of things or seeing things that they, you don't want them to see. Right, anyway, so that uh, that works. Uh, this has got a, a sight on the gun, which is excellent. And um, you fire like so. Right, let's have a look at the first person puppet then and see what it's got for facilities. There's quite a lot in this. It is a fully featured puppet with lots of special features, some of which are default on and some of which are default off. And there's lots of switches here that you can use. You don't need to know logic. Um, you can read the instructions here and it gives you um, uh, some uh, little text boxes here that you just hover over and it gives you um, some options. Um, so, um, Start on the left hand side here. Uh, some of the really great things is bullet holes. If I turn that on and I fire at the wall. Look 
at that. Um, it creates bullet holes. The only problem with this particular thing, and it is mentioned in the in the instructions, is that if you hit a player uh, and the player moves, the the uh, bullet holes stay in midair, uh, but they fade away after time. So it's not like a big deal. It's entirely up to you whether you have them or not. I think it's quite nice, but um, it's an added thing. It's just so nice to have. Uh, we've also got a jetpack. Not something you would normally have with a first person shooter. Um, the danger with this one, of course, is that your player could fly themselves out of your map. Um, so you'd have to have really tall uh, edges around your around your um, around your map effort area to stop him from doing that. Because at the moment, I can do this, and you don't want your player being able to do this. Um, it's a disaster, to be honest. You don't want this. So uh, it's up to you whether you have a jetpack, but you've got to bear in mind what, what a player could do, how they could actually ruin your game by using a jetpack. Um, where am I? No, we're over here. Okay, okay, so let's turn the jetpack off. Uh, there's a grappling hook. Grappling hook's really cool. Uh, so if I um, highlight this building facade, go to labels, label it up as scenery. Oh, I haven't turned it on. Let's turn on the grappling hook. Whoops. Grappling hook. So if you fancy being Spider-Man for a bit... you can climb up onto ledges just mark your ledges as grappleable and the grappling hook does the rest i think this is pretty cool um try to grapple anywhere else it doesn't work only grapples with something that's called scenery label things up as scenery and he'll be able to grapple um, so, for example, this up here, this billboard, label it as scenery. Woo! Again, you've got to be careful with this. Your player could throw himself off the whole map. Um, so, use with caution, I would say. Pretty cool, though. Um, right, so we'll turn the grappling hook off. There are other things here. Um, there's a, a parachute and um, skydiving and all sorts of things. Um, I, I haven't got it working so I, I haven't because I haven't read all the instructions yet so uh, there's lots of other things in here and um, there's also the controls for the the player down here for, and you can display those to the to the player uh, if you want to there they are there lots of them so there we go right so there is our player it's a pretty comprehensive little bit of kit that so let's start putting in some enemies shall we i'm going to choose the infantry and here's our guy i'll just pop him in the street like that and um there's also a shotgun guy and we'll put him over here. And there's some other models here, but um, snipers, zombie runners, all sorts of things. And you can you can play back with those. And I'm just going to experiment with these two for now. Oh dear, I'll come out the entire thing. Right, okay. Um, if I just left them like that, this is what is going to happen. As soon as I spawn, they're shooting at me. Coming at me, I'm being fired at. There he is, he's jumping around. 
There we go, I've killed them both. And you'll notice there is text boxes. There's one there, and there's one there, and there's one for my player as well. So let's delete those, because we don't want to see those in our game. Now, the one for the first player is here. Uh, once you've read it, delete it. And the ones for uh, these players are here. So you scope in and then delete the pink. There we go. There is a manual for each of these things. Uh, you can leave those. They're not displayed. Uh, so they're all deleted and it's all good. What we don't want is for the player to be inundated with all of our um, enemies all at once. You know, every enemy you ever want in the game, put them all down and they just come charging at him at once. That, that's not, not, not good. So what we're going to do... I'm just going to move. I'm just going to move this guy out of the way, and I'm just going to move this guy out of the way. I'm going to put down. Uh, this basic spawn logic chip and here it is here and now it looks a bit scary to start with but um it's pretty straightforward and we're going to play back with this so um first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put down a trigger zone so i don't want my player to be constant uh, to be inundated with uh, bullet fire as soon as he starts so i'm going to put down a trigger zone And I'll just move that there. So he steps into this area here. Then the firing will start. So there's my trigger zone. And I'm going to wire that up to this pink one up here. Start fight. And we're going to have our first wave here. So I'm going to open the emitter. And the emitter is going to to emit um, whatever I choose to emit, which is going to be our enemy soldier. I'm going to put him there. I shouldn't have closed that down. <laughs> Hang on. All right. There's my emitter. Okay, he's going to emit it over there. And I'm going to emit this soldier here. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to omit the once. It's going to be one soldier over there in that corner. Then for the second wave, open this one up. Um, I'm going to put him over here. And I'm going to emit woo, blah, this soldier. Okay, now you'll see that the these these soldiers have two of them. Um, this is the, the one that you see, and this is a ragdoll. So when they die, it'll emit a ragdoll and uh, and die. Okay. So, now we've got two different rounds. Let's see what happens. So we've got no enemies. There's no enemies in the street. There's none over there. There's none there. Okay, so I'm going to walk into the zone. And he appears from behind that... There we go, we got him. Excellent. Oh, 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 there's the other one. This one's got a shotgun. And he's dead. There we go. Like I say, there's the ragdoll. There we go. So now we've got a spawning system. Now you can put in 
multiple spawns. So for that first one, I can put in like seven minutes, seven seconds between spawns. And you can put in continuous and use a maximum of three. Uh, I'm going to put it as three. Uh, and three and seven seconds between emits. Right, let's see what that does. Hang on, let's go back. Okay. Right. Okay, there's our guy. Oh, now we've got two. Oh, I died. A bit ambushed. Now you'll notice that the when you respawn, you're respawning into a firefight because everything that we've just done uh, still counts. Nothing has been reset. There you go. I've killed them all. Oh, I've got a shotgun guy. There we go. Uh, so you can you can res you can spawn an emit multiple using this technique. Um, but let's uh, look at the reset option. Um, you can reset it, turning this on here, and then let's move this back inside your puppet. There is a logic processing. Inside that is this great big long controller logic. Inside that is the green controller logic. And we want the is dead. And wire that into... Um, not that. Yeah, that. The uh, the bin. That's the, t that's the text on how to use it. That's the bin. There we go. Put it in there. So now... Okay, so we start the game. Okay, he's re he spawned. We're getting to kill us. There's two of them. We died. I've respawned. And they're not over there anymore, look. The whole thing is reset. So obviously only do that if you want the player to go back uh, and re reset this scene. Um, and you'll notice I killed one guy. And it reset. And it set that guy off. There was no others spawned. No others got a chance to spawn. So if you want um, multiple, you, you would have to... Um, I've tried grouping, it didn't quite work. So maybe um, more than one emitter in different places uh, on uh, attached to uh, this counter would, would, would work. Um, this one is not done on a counter, it's done on a timer. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, there's a little delay in here of three seconds between you killing um, the 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 enemy here and this respawning. Now the reason this re this spawned before it admitted all of its characters is because there's a sensor in here. Not that one. That's my one. This one. This sensor senses how many enemies are still in play. And it didn't find any, so it moved on to the next one. Um, so that's why when I killed one, it didn't have a chance to spawn the others. So bear that in mind uh, for your uh, spawning design, how you want it to, to work. Um, so let's cover what happens if, uh, 
like an arena situation. I, I want to open this up to the next area. So it worked. once you've killed that second one, we're down to this third uh, area here. So instead of an emitter, we can delete that. Uh, we've got a timer. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a trigger zone. And I want it square. I wish square was the default, actually. <laughs> I don't... I use squares more often than I ever use the circles. I don't know if that's true for everybody else. Right, okay. Um, I'm going to put a trigger zone here. Right. There's a trigger zone. It's not in the right place. There we go. Move it, move it. There we are. Um... And, whoops, and I'm going to draw an arrow. Not a particularly good one, I did it very rough. But there we go, put some glow on it. And I'll put that down here. I mean, you can lay it on the ground, or you can put it up like that. Like. There we go. So we've got that painting with its um, menu up. So I'm going to say when this timer is finished, it's going to set off a counter. I am more comfortable using a counter than the timer because the timer just want to make sure uh, that this is, is going to work. Um, so uh, the painting then, uh, when the counter is full, uh, then it powers on that uh, arrow at the moment the counter is not full so it doesn't power it on and uh, once you're in the trigger zone I want to reset this timer and when you have hit this I want to destroy this wall there we go so what's going to happen then uh is well we'll see <laughs> so i'm moving to the trigger zone set off my guy over here Yeah, set off him. Oh, I've got guys here. I've missed. And there is a little arrow. And once I've gone through into the next zone, that arrow has gone away. But this is all opened up and then I can now wander around the rest of the map. So really simple. Um, it's a really great little spawn system. I love it. It's so simple. Um, and you can add to it and you can get all fancy with this. Add whatever you want to it. So you can see here we've got the, the destroyer. You've got the the little arrow there we've got a trigger zone that sets it off all of that's been added to this it's, it's easy to add and add and add to the the spawn sequences so fancy things could happen there could be a cut scene so once you get to to this next one maybe there's, there's, there's a cut scene um and you can 
remove these so there's only like three uh, in the sequence and then you turn it off all sorts of things and then have another spawn sequence somewhere else that, that handles it in the next zone etc so uh, a lot of things you can do um, really really useful so there's the basics it is possible to make a first person shooter without fiddling about with all of this just dump them down and there you go you're done um but uh spend a little bit of time reading the instructions the manuals on this there's such a lot in here that you can um amend and change and um you can even use intro attack outs uh enemies that are fully dressed so if i put in Enemy AI. Um, he's got some fully dressed ones here. Pretty much the same guy as we had before. Let's stick him over here. But he's fully dressed, and doesn't that look great? I use this one in the top down so you can have him in uh, top down combat, first person combat. He works for all of them and he's very efficient. <laughs> because he had a few shots in because I have him behind me. But there we go. Um, you could probably experiment with some other models and use this uh, logic and everything and place it in other models it's a bit of a fiddly thing to do but you can uh, do that or the the thing to do would be to design upon these mannequins yourself and they can be anything you like you can do science fiction fantasy um, this is an urban setting you could have warfare setting put them in camo um, there's it, all sort of things that you can do make them monsters it's very very cool a really great set one of the best kits in in dream especially um for the versatility of it so i hope you enjoy playing about with that please let me know if you make something in dreams using this kit or if you have made something in dreams made using this kit let me know and i'll check it out thanks for watching and i'll catch you in your dreams